Okay, so this is our most ultra budget meal video to date. Right now we're gonna challenge ourselves to get under 20 euros worth of groceries, which for reference is about 20 US dollars. And with it, we're gonna make five different days worth of meals. Each of these meals is gonna serve four. So that means each of those servings is gonna be under one euro each. Um, really excited to see what we can make. Let's go get shopping. literally just made the cusp when it came to, let me show you, making it under 20 euros. Like, look at that. So it's really close and I fully recognize that the Netherlands, they're known for having really affordable groceries. I know this might not be totally possible in different countries around the world. For me, more than anything, the idea of this was to kind of just show you which ingredients tend to be more budget friendly and if nothing else, hopefully these are just like some fun recipes that you get to try out. So let me show you what we got and let's see what we can make. There was a couple of things I noticed while I was at the grocery store and I wanna share them with you because I feel like these are great budget-friendly shopping tips to know about. The first being to see if your local grocery store carries its own house brand of products. If so, these tend to be a lot more affordable than name brands. And the second tip is to not be afraid to kind of crouch down and get low while shopping. This is because sometimes manufacturers pay extra to have their products shelved at eye level where consumers are more likely to immediately see and then purchase that product. So items that are on lower and higher shelves tend to be a bit more budget friendly. So hopefully these tips help. So when I'm trying to assemble a meal, I'm always trying to include a whole bunch of different kinds of vegetables. That's what you're gonna see on this side here. Some kind of grain, some kind of plant-based protein. And then because I don't want you going out and buying exotic spices you might not already have at home, we're gonna be using some different kind of pre-packaged spice mixes just to enhance the flavors of these meals. What you're not seeing here though are oil, salt, and pepper because I'm just gonna assume that these are ingredients that most of us already have at home. And today's video is in partnership with Skillshare. They're an incredible online learning community where you can take thousands of inspired courses but we're gonna chat more about them at the end for now let's make our first recipe so in thinking strategy I usually try to use up any perishable vegetables that I have earlier in the week that way I'm enjoying it while it's still fresh and this week what we've got is some spinach so for this first recipe let's make a delicious roasted vegetable salad to a baking tray, we're gonna add one and a half cups of cooked chickpeas. We're gonna drizzle over top of it some oil. We'll add a tablespoon of a burrito or taco spice mix. And then using our hands, we're gonna give it all a toss and then spread it out evenly. So this is one of my favorite hacks, buying these little sachets of pre-made seasoning mixes because it boosts the flavor of pretty much any meal with just a single scoop. But in case you can't find this at your local grocery store, we do have a recipe on the vlog that's quite similar to this. So I'll leave that link for you in the description box below. Next, we're gonna chop four medium potatoes into about one centimeter sized cubes. We're gonna transfer this to a separate large lined baking tray, along with four chopped carrots and six cloves of unpeeled garlic. Again, we can pour over top some oil and about a tablespoon of our burrito or taco spice mix, and then we're gonna to toss this to coat. We can now roast these trays in the oven at 430 Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius for about 20 minutes. When the time is up, we can remove the trays from the oven. I like to, at this point, add two onions that I've cut into wedges, and then we can give everything a quick toss. We can then return the trays to the oven for an extra 25 to 30 minutes or so, or until the potatoes and carrots are cooked through and the chickpeas are golden. While that all bakes, we're gonna make a protein-rich pea and garlic yogurt sauce. So to a bowl, we're gonna add one cup of frozen peas, and we're gonna pour boiling water over top of it to thaw. After 10 minutes, we're gonna drain it and then mash it with a fork. When the veggies have been removed from the oven and when the garlic cloves are cool enough to handle, we can peel them and mash them into the peas to give the sauce a lovely, subtle, caramelized garlic flavor. Then we can add one cup of unsweetened plant-based yogurt to the bowl, along with a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a generous amount of black pepper, and then we can give it a mix. So my goal with the recipes that we're gonna be making this week is to use no special equipment like blenders or food processors. But if you do wanna blend this one further just to have a bit more of like a smooth consistency, you can use an immersion blender and that's what I'm gonna do now, but this is totally optional. The mashing you've done is already good enough too. 
And all that's left is to assemble the salad. So we can add a generous amount of fresh spinach to a bowl. We can top it with our roasted veggies, sprinkle over top some of those crunchy chickpeas, and then we can add a generous dollop of the pea yogurt sauce on the side. It's fun getting creative with our protein sources by turning the chickpeas into little croutons and by mashing the peas into the yogurt. For how simple this recipe is to make, the salad is loaded with flavor and is incredibly filling with all those roasted veggies that are on top. Oh hey there, today we're gonna make some baked lentil and potato patty wraps. We'll first peel and chop two potatoes into about two centimeter sized cubes, and we can add this to a large pot along with half of a cup of uncooked green lentils or brown lentils would work too. We're then gonna cover this with plenty of water and let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes or until both are fully cooked through. Once we've drained it, we can add the potatoes and lentils to a large bowl, along with one tablespoon of a roti masala seasoning, half of a teaspoon of salt, and about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper. We're then gonna mash this until it's mostly pureed, but if there's a little bit of chunks in there, that's completely all right. So this is the second time that we're using a spice mix to help keep this recipe simple, delicious, and budget-friendly. So this is a roti masala, and it's made up of different spices, predominantly ground coriander, turmeric, ground cumin, and a few other spices as well. But if you don't have access to this one, you could always use curry powder, because that's also a blend of different kinds of spices. We can now gather up about two tablespoons of the mixture at a time into our hands, pressing it down flat into little patty shapes. When they've all been added to a baking tray, we're gonna pop this into the oven at 430 Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes or until it gets nice and golden. While that's baking away, we're gonna thinly slice about three medium carrots. We're gonna add this to a pan that's got a little bit of oil in it. And we're gonna cook this for about three to four minutes. Then we can add one thinly sliced onion as well, cooking this all for an extra three to four minutes or until the carrots are softened to your liking. While that's cooking away, we're gonna make a speedy sauce by adding one cup of yogurt to a bowl, along with one crushed garlic clove, half of a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Once we've given this sauce a mix and when the patties are fresh out of the oven, we're ready to assemble our meal. To some warmed up wraps, I like to add a generous amount of the garlic yogurt sauce. Then we can top it with some fresh spinach. The cooked carrot and onion mixture can go on top of that. And finally, we're gonna add to it the lentil and potato patties. Each component of this recipe keeps well in the fridge. So if you don't need all four servings, feel free to pack it up and then you'll have some delicious leftovers for lunch. So today we're gonna make what feels to me like some serious comfort food, a simple macaroni salad and some lentil quesadillas. We're gonna start by cooking one cup of rinsed lentils according to their package instructions or until they're cooked through, and then we can drain it. We're also gonna cook one cup of macaroni and in the last two minutes of it cooking, we can add in one cup of frozen peas and when the pasta is al dente, we can drain this too. To a large bowl, we can add the pasta and peas along with one shredded carrot, three quarters of a cup of unsweetened soy yogurt, and one tablespoon of some finely minced onion, two tablespoons of our taco or burrito spice mix, half of a crushed vegetable bouillon cube, and a bit of black pepper. Then we can mix this together and our macaroni salad is already ready. So the bouillon cube that's in this pasta salad I think makes it so delicious. It's like another hack. You're adding like this herby saltiness. It enhances the flavor of whatever dish you put it into. So now that this pasta salad is done, we're gonna move on to making our quesadillas. For this, we're gonna add the cooked lentils to a bowl, along with three tablespoons of chopped canned tomato and about two tablespoons of our taco spice mix. We're then gonna mash the lentils until they're pureed. We're then gonna spread this mashed mixture out over each half of about four large tortillas. Once we've folded the tortillas in half, we can take this over to the stove, and when we've heated up a little bit of oil on our pan, we're gonna cook the quesadillas for one to two minutes on each side or until they're golden. Then we can give it a flip and cook it equally on the other side. So now that our quesadillas are done, we could serve this with some store-bought salsa or guacamole if you'd like to, but I'm gonna stick with our budget and use only the ingredients that we bought. So I'm gonna make a simple salsa by just combining into a bowl one cup of some chopped canned tomatoes, along with just a little bit of minced onion, one small clove of crushed garlic, and a bit of salt and pepper, and then we can give it a mix, and it's already ready. 
This meal reminds me of something you'd have at a picnic. It definitely feels like comfort food, and it is delicious, both hot and cold. It's really easy for everyone to just serve up a little bit for themselves. And if we're adding any kind of garnishes throughout these recipes, by the way, like parsley or cilantro, it's just for the camera. It is definitely optional. So today we're gonna make a potato and spinach curry with the most delicious garlicky spin on traditional naan. To a large pot on high heat, we're gonna add some vegetable oil and one chopped onion. And then we can let this cook for about three to four minutes. We'll then add in about two cloves of minced garlic along with one crushed bouillon cube and three tablespoons of our roti masala seasoning or you could of course use some curry powder. Then we're gonna stir and let this cook for about one minute to toast. Next, we can add in about three diced potatoes that have been cut into like one centimeter cubes. We're gonna add in one diced carrot, one cup of cooked chickpeas, one cup of chopped canned tomatoes, and one cup of water. We're then gonna bring this to a boil, then reduce it to a simmer and let it cook for about 15 minutes while covered with a lid. Make sure to just give it a stir every so often just to make sure it cooks evenly and doesn't burn. We can now also cook about one and a half cups of rice according to the package instructions. So while that all cooks away, we are going to make a garlicky naan, but using tortillas. This is so simple and so good. To a small bowl, we're gonna add in two teaspoons of oil and two crushed cloves of garlic. Once it's mixed, we're gonna spread this over two large tortilla wraps, and then we can grill this for about one to two minutes on the bottom side. While that's cooking away, we're gonna brush some more of the garlicky oil to the top side, and then we can give it a flip and let it cook on the other side. Now returning to the curry, when the potatoes have been cooked through, we're gonna add in about two cups of fresh spinach along with a cup of frozen peas. We'll give it a stir, we'll let it cook for about a minute, and once the spinach has wilted, we're ready to serve this one up. If you have the budget for it, you could elevate this curry by adding a bit of coconut milk to it at the end, but it's also delicious as is, and especially when served with a garlicky tortilla naan, which is hands down my favorite part. So for this final recipe, we're gonna be making a hearty soup with some crispy tortilla chips. To a large pot on medium high heat, we're gonna add a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And when it's hot, we can add to it one finely chopped onion and four cloves of minced garlic. We're gonna give this a stir, letting it cook for about two to three minutes before we add in two cups of canned diced tomatoes and two tablespoons of our burrito or taco spice mix, cooking this for an extra two minutes. Next, we can add in about six cups of water, two crushed vegetable bouillon cubes, two and a half cups of cooked chickpeas, three quarters of a cup of rinsed uncooked rice, and a quarter teaspoon each of salt and pepper. We can then bring this all to a boil and reduce the heat to a simmer, letting it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the rice is tender. So while that cooks away, we're going to make some tortilla chips to go with our soup. It's really delicious. So we're just going to cut up about four large tortillas into little triangle shapes. We're gonna drizzle over top about a tablespoon of vegetable oil, about half a teaspoon of salt, just a little bit of ground black pepper. And once we've given it all a toss, we're gonna to spread it out over a baking tray. And then we're gonna bake this in the oven at 390 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius until they're nice and crispy, making sure to give it a flip at least once at the halfway point after about four minutes. When ready to serve this one up, we can add several generous scoops of the soup to our bowls. We're gonna then garnish this with a little bit of cilantro. Again, this is completely optional. It's just to make it look cute for the camera. Uh, but what I wouldn't say is optional are those crunchy tortilla chips that you can serve alongside it. This soup is easily one of my new favorite recipes. It's so simple and wholesome, flavorful and filling. To me, it's the epitome of comfort food. Make sure to use those crispy tortillas to scoop up bitefuls of the soup and enjoy.
So we were able to make five different meals this week where each of the servings came out to under one euro and we even have some groceries that are left over that we could use in future meals. In case you didn't know, we do have a feature on our website that allows you to input certain ingredients that you have on hand and then it'll let you know which recipes you might be able to use them in, which is really nice. And thank you again to Skillshare for partnering with us on today's video. If you've been interested in maybe picking up an instrument or learning to illustrate, or maybe you'd even like to up your food photography game, well, Skillshare offers thousands of different online classes that help you in your journey towards learning a new skill or improving an existing one. I recently followed along in my friend Nathaniel Drew's class called Document Your Life and in the class he shares these four alternative ways that we can capture precious moments in our lives but with intention so it's not just like snapping photos and videos of random things that we see that just inevitably get lost in our endless camera roll. So if you think you might be interested in learning more about intentional documentation or if you'd like to take any other creative classes that Skillshare offers you can get a one month free trial by checking out the link in the description box below. And that's where I'm also gonna leave the full breakdown to all of the recipes that we made this week. Thanks so much for hanging with us this week. This has been loads of fun. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It always means a lot when you do. And Pickup Limes signing off. We'll see you in the next video. Under 20 euros worth of groceries. <laughs> These birds. <laughs> for today's recipe, we're gonna make a, um, darn, what are we making? We're very awkward at this. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.